is a young comedian making his first appearance on The Tonight Show, and this is a great crowd. He, he lucked in tonight. Uh, he's, uh, he, has, he has a somewhat uh, caustic delivery uh, and a rather rapid fire. He's a regular at the improvisation. He's got a special on Home Box Office uh, premiering April the 21st. Would you welcome Bobby Slayton? Bobby? <laughs> Now, if you're from California, you'll appreciate this. If not, laugh along anyway. I spent the last two days in traffic school to erase the ticket from my license so my car insurance wouldn't go up. For going 10 miles over the speed limit, I spent eight hours of my life in a classroom full of people from Southeast Asia named... <laughs> An entire room full of people that thought it was okay to make a U-turn on the freeway because they thought they saw a recyclable aluminum can on the other side of the road. Now, don't encourage me to do this kind of stuff. Now, you know, it's not any group of people that can't drive, but I'll tell you something. When you go around the country, you'll see that in Florida, they blame the old people for not being able to drive. And in New York, it's the cab drivers. And wherever you go, and you know who's got the brunt of driving jokes more than anybody? has got to be women. And women can drive as good or as bad as anybody else. Although, wait, 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 wait. It's not the Donahue show. Just wait a second. Although I'll tell you, women, the idea of putting car phones in automobiles is not going to help that women driver's myth whatsoever. I mean, you've already got the rearview mirror for putting on makeup. Now you got a phone and a gas pedal. This is a deadly combination. Gee, Sally, I'm in my car right now. I'm driving along. You know, Bloomingdale's having a big sale. You know, they said like was running. I mean, drug drivers are bad enough, but at least they're looking at the road. see eight of them, but at least give them an E for effort. <laughs> so you know what it comes down to, though? All kidding aside. It's not any group of people that can't drive. What it comes down to is that in this country, it's basically too easy to get a license. I mean, if you think about it, at 16, you get a license. At 18, you vote. And at 21, you can drink. And that's stupid. I mean, if you're a moron, you know, things in this country ought to work by IQ and not by ID. You know, if you're an idiot, you should never be allowed to vote. <laughs> Just worry about large fries, small fries, keep your trainee hat on, Gomer, and stay out of the way. I'm voting. <laughs> And I'll tell you something else, the 21-year-old drinking age is the worst. And I'm not saying that teenagers should be allowed to drink, but at the same time, there's a lot of adults that should never be allowed in a bar. Drinking's a responsibility. See, if it worked by how smart you are, let's say you went to a bar, and the bouncer, the doorman, the bartender, ask for your IQ card instead of your ID card. Well, let's see here, your IQ is only 30. Well, it is a country western bar. I guess you could come on in. I knew you were going to react like that, but I couldn't. See, so you know what's very interesting, though? This whole country, not just the country, but everything works by how old you are. You know, I mean, biologically, and I'm sure you've all heard this before, they say that men reach their sexual peak at around 17 or 18, and women reach it in their 30s. Now, that's not right, and it's not fair. I'm in my 30s, and I still love sex. It's just, first, I want to see what's on cable. <laughs> you married guys know what I'm talking about. My wife's going to kill me for doing that joke on national TV, but, and I love my wife, but I love that joke, and I chose. <laughs> you know, and you know, I mean, you're always hearing comics do jokes about marriage, and I'm happily married, I love my wife, I'll just put that on the record. But you know, marriage was not a guy's idea. You know a woman thought of this, and some guy fell for this hook, line, and sinker. You know, you know, many years ago, some guy was going, all right, honey, let me get this straight, so... I can never sleep with anybody else ever again for the rest of my life. And then if things don't work out, you get to keep all my stuff. That's great! See, you know, what, you know what the problem is with a lot of relationships? And I'm not blaming this on women, but it's not our fault. Women are always accusing guys. Women are always accusing guys of not being romantic enough. And it's not that we're not romantic. It's just that men have a different idea about romance. And I think most guys will back me up on this. Now, to me, a romantic night is you stay home, you get a pizza, and you rent Robocop. <laughs> great night, great night. Anniversary, Thanksgiving, it doesn't matter. But see, women want to do more feminine things, like making candlelight dinners. And then you get all tipped off at us because we don't appreciate it. You know, you ever make a candlelight dinner for a guy, and after like a minute, I can't see the damn potato, what are we eating here? <laughs> Where's my fork? Get, get the TV out, get some light over here, this sucks. <laughs> It's like taking a shower together. Yeah, women, of course, you like it because you're the ones under the hot water. <laughs> you know? You know, we're the ones standing over here all shriveled up with soap on our eyes. Yeah, honey, this is great. I got soap in my face. Let me know when there's no more hot water. It'll be my turn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Certain things.
things just sound like they're going to be fun until you do them. It's like the other morning, I had pancakes. I was in a restaurant. I never eat pancakes, but it, it sounded like a good idea. And every time you get pancakes, they're, they're always terrible. You know, these, these doughy, cholesterol-filled sacks of crap, and you take two bites, and you never finish them, but it sounded like a good idea. I'll give you a better example. Last summer, better example. Last summer, my wife drags me to play miniature golf, the stupidest game of all time. But I haven't done it since I was a kid, so we do it. And of course, we get stuck behind this third world family with laundry on their head. You know? They have nine kids. They have no concept of the game. One of the kids is trying to eat the ball. Another kid's got his hand caught in the windmill. Another both families living in the windmill. Yeah, this is just great, honey. Why don't we play another round of miniature golf? We'll go home, make a pancake, candlelight dinner, then we'll take a shower together. It'll be a dream fantasy weekend. I'll tell you what sums it up, though. This sums it up. This past summer, I brought my wife and my daughter to the zoo. And like all the other dads and all the other guys, I'm walking around the zoo, and it was okay. The guys don't really care about the zoo until they get to the primate house. When men are watching gorillas, they're in seventh heaven. You ever watch women watching gorillas? They're always making these comments like, oh, it's hot, it stinks in here. Oh, what's the gorilla doing? What's he picking out? What is he eating? What is he throwing? Oh, what's he doing to the other gorilla? Gross! And the guys are going, I can do that. 